for the wedding ceremony of Scott Higgins and Kelly Lynch on this May the 4th, 2017. And it is a joy to uh, be together and to celebrate and to marry this couple off. Uh, Scott and I were just talking that this, uh, this is 22 years in the making. And uh, there's a lot of rejoicing going on and a lot of gratefulness to God for His abundant provision. Want well, to welcome you. My name is Daniel Valley. I uh, have the blessing and privilege of serving here at the First Church of Christ Bradford. And uh, I just wanted to point out that uh, these, these wedding programs also have our contact information on the back. Should there be anything that we as a faith family can do for each and every one of you, please feel free to contact us. It would be our joy to walk with you in this life. I uh, typically bring a charge to everybody in the room on the day of a, uh, of a wedding, and my first charge is to all who are present. To all who are present, um, come to find out that on uh, Scott's social media site, on his Facebook, he's got 355 friends listed. <laughs> and Kelly Ann has 324. Can't fit them all in here. So this uh, lovely uh, gathering of the closest of the family and friends to Scott and Kelly Ann, my charge to you is that you would love this couple well, that you would pray for them, that you would encourage them, and uh, certainly we, we all know that it takes a community to have uh, a healthy marriage. And so may you uh, be empowered to bless and encourage this man and this woman, okay? The second charge is uh, to the bridesmaids and the groomsmen, as I said the other night, not just a group of pretty faces. <laughs> and uh, beautiful uh, dresses and gowns, beautiful touches, but you represent uh, the creme de la creme of the friendships, that, uh, the, the many friendships that Scott and Kellyanne have, and to each one of you, there is a charge to stay close to these two, to keep your eye on them, to love them, to encourage them, to pray for them, to minister to them, to serve them, so that their marriage and Lord willing family thrives. That's on uh, this very, very close represented uh, group of family and friends. So I'm gonna charge that to you. And last but not least, uh, my charge to, uh, to you, Scott, and to you, Kellyanne. Uh, I, I noticed on your social media sites as well that uh, your first picture together was October 12th on 2012. And uh, let alone the high school pictures with maybe one in the background. But uh, as we said, 22 years in the making to get to this point, and this is beautiful. I did notice that Bonnie shared some comments on one of your pages. She, she said, congratulations to you both. This has been a long time coming. Enjoy yourselves today and for the rest of your lives. I like what Nancy said. She said, congratulations to you both, Scott and Kellyanne. As you walk with our Lord step by step and day by day, may he be at the center of your lives in marriage. And we, your praying brothers and sisters, will be the community who will always be rooting for you. I like that. And I like what Lauren said. Who the heck gets married on a Thursday afternoon? <laughs> But he didn't quit there. He goes on with some very, very warm and encouraging words where he, uh, he and his wife, Fran, extend uh, their congratulations to our friends and Star Wars fanatics. Absolutely. Scott and Kellyanne who will begin their lives together today. Well, the response for this day is, and also with you, the adapted greeting. And so, all together now, may the fourth be with you. And also with you. That's great. That's great. I did notice Scott's uh, status on his Facebook page. I'm 37 years old, who is loved and saved by Jesus Christ. And I have an amazing fiance who I love so much. 
We'll make sure right after the wedding you change your Facebook oh, status. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Can't do it. Sure. Enough. Matter of fact, would you give them a couple of wishes just before we go? <laughs> <laughs> Kellyanne's comments uh, along the way to uh, the many friends who shared their love and, and, and encouragements. She said, thank you all. I am so looking forward to marrying my best friend, who is a catch beyond belief. Isn't that good? That's great. Well, at this time, I'd like to invite uh, Timothy Lynch, the father of the bride, to come and bring us a scripture reading from the Song of Solomon. Let's hear together the word of our God. I'm going to read from Song of Solomon, chapter 8, verses 6 and 7. Place me like a seal over your heart, like a seal on your arm. For love is as strong as death, its jealousy and yielding is the grave. It burns like blazing fire, like a mighty flame. Many waters cannot quench love, rivers cannot wash it away. If one were to give all the wealth of his house to love, it would be utterly scorned. Thank you, Mr. Lynch. Kellyanne, you'll have to excuse Scott for just a uh, moment or two while he uh, goes to the mic. And along with uh, his sister Wendy, serenades you and us by singing the gift of love.
7 to 12. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God. And whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. In this, the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only Son into the world, so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we have loved God, but he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God abides in us and his love is perfected in us. Scott and Robin will now join together and sing all I ask of you. Nothing can 
serenading his bride to be. When was the last time? <laughs> like to share a couple of um, beautiful, beautiful uh, passages on marriage, one from the Older Testament and one from the New Testament. May we hear together the word of our God. The Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep, and while he was sleeping, the Lord took one of the man's ribs and closed the place up with flesh. And then the Lord God made a woman, a babe, from the rib he had taken out of the man, and he brought her to the man. The man said, all poetically, this is now bone of my bones, and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. And for this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and they will become one flesh. Genesis chapter 2, verses 18 through 24. In the New Testament, we hear these words from the Apostle Paul. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body, and is himself its savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of the water with the word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. In the same way husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as Christ does the church, because we are members of his body. Therefore, even the Apostle Paul says, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This mystery is profound, and I'm saying that it refers to Christ and the church. However, let each one of you love his wife as himself, and the wife see that she respects her husband. Well, if you were paying attention to those words, especially in the Ephesians passage, uh, you'll notice that there were 58 words addressed to the wife to submit to her husband. 5 8, 58. To the husband, he's charged 109 words. I'm just saying. <laughs> Gotta leave, leave some things be. <laughs> Scott and Kellyanne, marriage is the creation of God. He designed it. Man, woman, and their maker. He knows what makes it work and what doesn't. A Christian marriage is one flawed person married to another flawed person living together in a broken world but with a faithful God. Scott and Kellyanne, this God I commend to you to celebrate in the love he has given you for each other. And when the times are tough, know that he is a promise-keeping God. And he will love you and help you with his everlasting love. That's why he gave his own son, Jesus Christ, to show you the extent and certainty of his presence and abiding help for your marriage. Please know that my heart is open to you both as your pastor 
and as your friend. Scott, to your queen, Kellyanne Padme, may the force be with you as you travel through the galaxy of life together. May you pledge to never turn to the dark side, but stand forever in the illumination of Christ's love. May you vow to fight the evil empire and invite your love to take your place, to take her place at your side as you serve in this galaxy. May you take her hand and stand with her for light and justice throughout your entire lives. To Kellyanne, to your Jedi, Scott, Anakin, your love, may you take his hand and accept his pledge. May the Force be strong with you all the days of your lives. There is good in him, and I know you sense it. <laughs> remain, remain a princess of the Lord, and may Scott stand by you. May you pledge to him your love and your companionship as long as you both shall live. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 Let's stand together as a congregation. Let's turn. Let's sing together hymn number two. There's a pew Bible, a pew uh, hymnal uh, there. It's red or blue, perhaps. And turn to hymn number two. How great thou art. We will sing verse number one only, led by Scott and Kellyanne. Let's sing together hymn number two and just the first verse of How Great. Thou art. O Lord, my God, when
God indicating your responsibility to Kellyanne to receive her into your care and keeping, I give you this ring to place on her finger as both a symbol and promise that you receive her. Just as this ring circles her finger, so may you encompass her with strength and protecting love as a reminder that your new relationship will never end in this life, just as Christ's love for the church and his love for us is unending. Would you repeat after me? Kellyanne. Kellyanne. This ring I give you. This ring I give you. As a constant reminder. As a constant reminder. Of my abiding love and commitment. Of my abiding love and commitment. Kellyanne indicating your responsibility to Scott to receive him into your gift and devotion. I give you this ring to place on his finger as both a symbol and promise that you receive him. And just as this ring circles his finger, so may you encompass him with the love and devotion as a reminder that your new relationship will never end and that you belong to Scott as the church belongs. Repeat after me. Scott, Scott, this ring I give you, <coughs> I give you as, a reminder, as a constant reminder of my abiding love and commitment. Of my abiding love and commitment. At this time I'll share, uh, well actually we won't share, Scott and Kelly Ann will share their, uh, their personal uh, vows uh, to me. Once upon a time, in a faraway land known as Havel High, <laughs> a tale as old as time, true as it can be now. Barely even friends, then Scott Higgins friends, unexpectedly. The fair maiden Kellyanne, who was and is the most beautiful princess in all the kingdom, started to realize she ain't never had a friend like me. <laughs> After three years of talking, laughing, geeking out over Star Wars, all kinds of geekdom, I was a part of your world. And I lost your most amazing smile when you unfortunately had to go away to learn all the knowledge you had at college. That's the story of you and me from the very beginning. We were meant to be. Now, if people don't know, since I was a young man, I prayed to our Lord for someone so special and so beautiful that would love me until the end of time. I wanted a babe just like Adam got in the garden 
so he wouldn't be alone and I wouldn't be alone. I just never knew he would be more kind to me and know exactly what I needed when he gave me you. Everyone that knows me knows my favorite movie of all time is Titanic. Not the disaster, but in the midst of chaos, there was a love story that I always wanted to have. I needed and dreamt of someone that would look at me and in the bad times, just look at me and say, you jump, I jump, right? Well, here we are taking that leap of faith into the great ocean of God's greatest gift of love and marriage. If nobody knows, obviously we love movies. <laughs> and I have to tell you, I was so afraid to even talk to her in the beginning when we started reconnecting. John totally remembers we were in Vegas and I went to a shop and I caught her something. And it came out and John was like, who's that for? <laughs> he knows now who that was for. <laughs> now, my dear friend Terry went to the movies with me. And there was a movie that hit me and struck me. And it was We Bought a Zoo. And it changed my whole life. In one sense, it meant that he said, 20 seconds of courage can change your life forever. And I immediately went on Facebook and sent you a message saying, I'll meet you at Yoga Tree. And here we are. <laughs> 20 seconds from one simple scene from a movie. And I gotta tell you, I felt like Rocky. I was in my living room throwing punches, going, come on! <sighs> Man, I'm so glad you said yes. <laughs> to me by prayer, and he knew my heart always. My sisters can contest this, or test me. Ever since I was young, I've always had a thing for red-headed women. Yeah. <laughs> always. <laughs> Sorry. Always have. Yeah. I don't discriminate them, do I? <laughs> I've loved Little Mermaid Ariel. I had the hugest crush on Elizabeth Perkins from Big. Yeah. Wasn't the movie. It was her. I was so mad at him at the end when he would not go with her. I was like, come on! <laughs> well, I'm not that person. I'm here. And I asked you. So, if nobody knew, our story, when I've always wanted that love story, you hit my soul. <laughs> I knew Wendy always said, whoever you date next, has to come through me. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to ask you the Thanksgiving. They already did it before I could even ask you. <laughs> and then when you came, I'll never forget it. You had your yearbook with you, and I had no clue what it meant. And you said, do you remember writing this? And all you out there, they have the same date cards. This is what I wrote. Hi, Cal. I will miss everything about you. Your laugh, your smile. You're special to me. Love, Scott. And in that very moment, I knew God answered my prayer. I, I, it took the words out of my mouth. I couldn't go through Thanksgiving afterwards. I was sitting there on my brain going, Oh my Lord, I'm here. He gave me my bed. Everything in my life, all my choices, whether bad or good, the blood may be you. My choices, my heartbreaks, everything. And we are, when we are together, my past was so worth it. I don't regret anything. And if I had done anything different, I would not have you today. <coughs> so that's my confession. I should not be here. And the Lord has been so good to me. I am living proof that there is a God. I should not be here. And he loves me more than I ever could have known. That's why I can tell you more than I ever deserve. And even in our rough time, Danny's father put on our Facebook, read 1 Samuel 12, verse 16. And I didn't know at the time how much it would affect me now looking back at it. We were going through rough patches. It says, now therefore, Stand still and see this great thing that the Lord will do before your very eyes. 
Here we are. Look at what the Lord did. All our friends hear us. So to bring everything to a close, in what we will do in our lives, God, to honor Him and what He has done for us and for me, giving you the best words all I can express from is my favorite, as you know, and I brought it to you on my birthday, Beauty and the Beast, the musical. We are home. We are where we shall be forever. Trust in me, for you know I won't run away. From today, this is all that I need, and all that I need to say. Don't you know how you've changed me? Strange how I finally see. I found you. You're my home. Stay with me. I love you now, forever, always, and a day, till my very last breath when our Lord calls me home. And all I can say is stay to you for setting my heart and soul free. This time, uh, Scott and Kellyanne will come to light the unity candle symbolizing the flames of two lives merging into one, illuminating his way for all whom they touch, but moreover, warming and guiding one another in Jesus Christ from this day forth and forevermore. Thank you, Mr. 
Mr. and Mrs. Scott and Kelly Ann Higgins. going to those fun events with us, um, going, to, going to, you know, midnight showings of Star Wars, um, you know, being super excited about anything new, Harry Potter, anything Disney, just like, you know, fun stuff. Um, we're just so, so lucky to have you. I am so happy to see Scott, um, you know, just have everything that he's ever wanted. Um, you know, he finally found what was right for him. It took some searching, but you came and he knew that you would come for him. So we are just so, so happy to welcome you to our family. And like one said, Tristan gained another auntie and a cool one at that. So here's to your wedding. We love you very much. We both love you and we're very blessed as well as Scott that you are gonna be our family now. Yay, it's all the years of fun. Woo <laughs> First off, I wanted to start off by saying thank you to uh, Tim and to Susan, who are over here, the founders of the feast this evening. Uh, and then I also wanted to say thank you to mom and dad, uh, Mike and Louise, for the rehearsal dinner the other night. But I wanted to share something with you all from the rehearsal dinner. Um, before that, we had obviously the wedding rehearsal, and um, Daniel Valley said something that was pretty meaningful to everybody that was there, and I wanted to share it with all of you. So if you think about the ceremony, there was a lot of Hollywood stuff that kind of went on, if you get down to it. There was music, there were props, there were set pieces, there are costumes. I'm wearing a rented costume right now, for example. So, but, but what Danny said to us was, is that set all of that stuff aside and be in the moment, is what he said. And so the moment that we all shared today was the moment that two people before God and all of their friends and family 
stood up and professed their love for each other and shared that with all of us. And it's a really pretty thing. It's a really beautiful thing. So um, if you know Kellyanne and Scott, they actually kind of keep their relationship kind of to themselves. So for them to welcome all of us into this day together and that they didn't just go ahead and elope actually says a lot that they wanted to <laughs> celebrate this with us. So. Okay. Um, and that's really what today's about, right? Today's about the love that Kellyanne and Scott share. So, Kellyanne, you and I have something in common. Besides the fact that we love the X-Files, did anybody notice that the X-Files theme was playing when we came in earlier? So, seriously though, um, you and I were both outsiders into Scott's family before we met them. But I think that you'll find, and I'm sure that you found, is, is that they're very welcoming, they're very loving, they're very caring. And you never feel like an outsider because they embrace you as one of their own. So on behalf of, of my family, I'd like to say welcome to our family. Scott, part of that family is you. Um, Scott, one of the things that I treasure most about our family is the relationship that I have with you. I've known you for, you and I have both known each other for over half our lives. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, and the friendship and the bond that you and I have is something that I treasure. So, so with that, let's all raise our glasses to Kellyanne and Scott. Kellyanne and Scott, may the road that you go down together be sure, be always be filled with the love that you had today. And let the rough patches always be pebbles and never be boulders. Let the dark, part, the dark patches always be twilights and never be pitch black. To Kellyanne and Scott. Mr. and Mrs., congratulations. Yes. Let's pray together. Uh, Lord, may you bless this food to our bodies. Thank you for Scott and Kellyanne. Thank you for families on both sides. Thank you for uh, friendships that run deep. And so we pray that uh, this evening would be blessed with your presence and with the joy of life that you give us. We pray these things through Christ our treasure. And all God's people said, Amen.
led me to where you are Others who broke my heart They were like northern stars Pointing me on my way Into your loving arms This much I know is true That God blessed the broken road that led me straight to you.